I'm not making that mistake again by not getting some bananas for the road. So, it's all this fruit stand on the side of the road, and well, we're gonna get some bananas. Uh, let's see. Arabanyak, yeah. Dua Pulu Ribu. Dua Pulu Ribu? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Dua Pulu Ribu. Crazy, they're still stuck to the tree, the branch here. You have to cut them off. Wow. It doesn't get any fresher than that, does it? What else they got in here? Some oranges, some apples, some salak. Some grape, huh? Salak. Salak. Okay. Honda. Salak and. Salak manis. Manis. Ini udah sama-sama manis. Ini langka. Lain kain, lain kain. Lain kain. Jadi, apa langka? Nanti, nanti, nanti. Apa langka saja? Satu juga, okay? Satu juga. Okay, terima kasih. Alright, terima kasih. Okay, thank you. Bananas here are very different. They kind of have an orange glow to them. And they're a lot sweeter. Yep. That's a good banana. Alrighty, welcome to another beautiful day here in Banda Aceh. Can't just say Banda, I gotta say Banda Aceh. Today we're just gonna get on the bike. We're gonna head to the coast. We're gonna check out a mosque that was uh, the only thing standing after the tsunami hit in 2004. And we're gonna go check out that area, check out the beach. It's about 30 minutes from the center of town, from the center of Bandache. And so we're just gonna stop and if there's anything interesting to look at, like maybe a big old building with the painting on the side, we're gonna stop and look at it. That's what's awesome about being on a bike like this. And so we're gonna get out and uh, hello. And yeah, just see, see some stuff. I already had lunch. I had some miache. You probably saw that in the previous video or the same video. I don't know if I'm gonna break it up or not, but yeah. Let's get on our way. I got my bananas. I got my sunblock. I got the kind that doesn't rub in very well. I'm all white and nasty looking, but that's okay. Gotta protect the arms. Gotta, that time I rode from Medan to Lake Toba, four hours on a bike just getting Blasted by the sun, it was not a good idea. I was red like a lobster. Okay, enough talking, let's get on the road. All right, so this is what I wanted to come check out today. I am at the Masjid Ramutula Lampuk, or Masjid Turkey. So this is the mosque that withstood the tsunami. The 30 meter high wall of water that hit this area. And if you search tsunami Indonesia 2004 or any of those, you know, keywords or whatever, you're going to see this mosque for sure. I mean, it is astonishing. It's crazy to think that this was the only thing standing. Everything else was completely destroyed and washed away. I mean, it's just brown everywhere around this white mosque. And so, I want to come here, check it out. You can kind of see from here, they left part of the mosque uh, as is, like how it was uh, destroyed by the, the tsunami. And well, I'm guessing, I'm hoping I'll be able to get in this mosque. The one in the middle of Bandache, they wouldn't let me inside, but we'll see. I'm going to go uh, walk around and uh, see if it's okay to go inside and have a look. Saya bisa masuk? Saya bisa masuk? No? No? Okay. No, but... 
I want to see. What are you looking here? The, uh, in 2004, the tsunami, yeah. the, you know, came. Oh, and, after tsunami, you come. Yeah, yeah. So I want to tell. Saya mau lihat saja. Terima kasih. Thank you. Where you come from? I'm from America. Yes. Okay. Hello. I think they have a room over here that has a bunch of pictures in it. Maybe I'll be able to go check that out. But if you're not Muslim, I guess. In other places, in Malaysia and in Indonesia, I've been able to do that, but maybe not here. That's okay, though. Hello. Yeah, you can. Di Boleh masuk. Okay. Boleh, Tidak bisa masuk. Di dalam. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Here it has a bunch of the pictures from the aftermath. I mean, look at that. Nothing out here. Completely destroyed. I mean, this is 2005. This is where I'm at right now. Nothing. This is what it looked like in 2005. Photo, okay. Berdua? So yeah, I think this might be the closest we're gonna get. I don't think I'm gonna be able to go inside the mosque, but you can you can see from here. They left a corner of the mosque over here as is, you know. I think they reinforced it a little bit with wire and whatnot. You know, I'm sure they made it strong so it didn't collapse, but this is basically how it was after the tsunami hit. You can see the pillars leaning in right there, completely broken. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. Okay, well, where am I gonna go now? I have no idea. The beach should be pretty close, as you can imagine. So let's go check out a beach. I've seen three other white people on the way here, so I think this might be an area where you can do some surfing because that's what they look like. <laughs> Check it out lead you right to the beach. It looks like it's pretty nice out here. Ooh. Now that is a beautiful beach. Nice and clean. Nice soft sand, blue waters. Tons of dragonflies. And I'm in jeans. <laughs> Dang it. Woo, it is warm out here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I guess the only thing left to do is go get a Kalapa, chill out on one of these gazebos, and uh, do nothing. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Hello. Apa kabar? Bye. Kelapa ada? Ada. Ada satu berapa? Seperti biasanya kita jual 15000 satu. 15000 15000 Okay, 15000 satu. Okay. Alright. Mau kita pakai ini gula? Ah. Sugar, sugar. 
sedikit saja. Kalau begitu kita pisahkan. Gula, gula sedikit. Kita pisahkan. So, sono mama, ah, uh, no, sono mama. Ah. <laughs> That's Japanese. Ah, uh, just kelapa. Ya. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Terima kasih. Sono mama. Not in Japan. Can't tell if these are houses or shops or what. Any Ruma? Ruma? Toko? Toko? Bukan Ruma? Ruma? Ini Ruma. Ah. Orang tinggal di sana? Belum? Okay. So it looks like there's a bunch of just abandoned houses all spread out through here. And here's a house, but she says nobody's living here. Oh, okay. I'm not really sure what she said, but. Relax. Uh -huh. Okay, so maybe it's a second home for somebody. Ah, uh, okay, I see. But what about this one? This one has a door open. Awesome. Okay. Ah, Sama. Okay, so maybe the person that owns that also owns this. Uh, okay. Over here being nosy. She's got a nice touch to it. Usually I just see people hacking away. Okay, she made a little handle. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Chantik Sakali. Yeah. Ah, it's okay. No? No sugar. No no gula. S. S no, it's okay. Okay, may I S Sadiki? Sadiki. Sadiki. Maybe a little bit little bit of ice. Not much. You know, you just want the fresh coconut water and that's it, but a little, a little ice more hurt. Yeah. One thing's for sure, this place is built to host a lot of people. But it is a Wednesday at 2 o'clock and there's hardly a soul here. But maybe on the weekends it gets pretty busy. Kind of reminds me of K Island when I was there. I showed up like on a Friday. Hardly anybody on the beach. A beautiful white sand beach. Hardly a soul there within the next day on Saturday, Sunday. Got pretty busy. I mean, but look at this. Just like K, it is a very clean and nice looking beach. Beautiful sand. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Whoo! And I don't have my swimsuit. Really not much else I can do here besides uh, bake out in the sun. I don't think I want to do that, but let's take some pictures. Get on out of here. All right, I think I found the most happening part of the beach right here. There are maybe a total of six or seven cars. So there's gonna be other people around. It won't just, won't just be me. Hello. All right, over here. All right. Okay. Yeah, these are a little nicer too than the ones I was just on. And there's actually people out here swimming. Look at that. Oh, I wish I brought my swimming trunks. What was I thinking going to a beach in jeans? This kid's got the right idea. Man. Okay. Whew. Hmm. Panas. Banana, Sudabuli. 
Uh, um, maybe mm-hmm. some ikan bakar. Ikan bakar. Ik, hmm, ikan bakar. Mm-hmm. Berapa ikan bakar? Ikan bakar 2,000 per ounce. 2,000 per ounce? Uh, okay. Okay, uh, okay ikan bakar. You want to rice? And rice, yes. Alright, I get to choose my fish. Mm-hmm. Basar. Mm-hmm, a bigger. big fish. Uh-huh. Maybe a smaller one. Maybe. Smaller one. Mm-hmm. No babies. Yeah, no babies. Some, no babies, <laughs> <laughs> no babies <laughs> but how about. Yeah, no maybe babies. this one. This. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, what's the difference? What is the redfish? Uh, this is uh, Indonesian crabu. Okay. Kakap. Uh, Rambu. GT. Korean okay. traveling. Okay, okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is the meatiest? The most meat? The lightest? The meatiest? The best mm-hmm. tasting? The best, uh, the best is uh, Krapu. That one? Uh-huh. Okay. Right. You want it? I'll try that one. Okay. Sure. It's a big guy, but let's do it. Okay. Thank you. Wow. All for me? Oh, that looks pretty damn good. Thank you. Okay, so pedas tira pedas. Okay, nice. Man, look at that. Wowzers. Uh, okay. Bon appetit. Damn, that looks good. So here they serve you with a, a little bowl of water here. And I think that's, that's just to clean your hands if you want to eat with your hands. I'm gonna go Indonesian style. Oh yeah. It's covered in some kind of, some kind of seasoning. Mm-hmm. Don't know what it is, but it is good. You're gonna go? Okay. Hati hati. Let's try the chili one first. Mm. Boom. Delicious. That's all I have to say. That is freaking good. The only thing I hate about fish? The bones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the sauce is kind of sweet, but it does have a little bit of spice to it. It's good. And oh, let me go see. Mm, this is gonna take me forever. All right, let's do that. Let's flip it over. Ooh, it's hot. There we go. Look how meaty that is. Look how nice and meaty that is. I think this is going to be about 140,000 rupiah, which is about 10 bucks. 10 bucks for all this. You kidding me? You kidding me? This would cost like 60, 70 bucks anywhere else in the world. Ooh. Whatever they seasoned it with, it is good. I think you've seen enough. I'm going to eat this and uh, we'll get on out of here. Sagoko Moshiroi. So this man just came up to me and said hello and was like, hey, where are you from? What are you doing here? Blah, blah, blah. And we're all, uh, his English is maybe a little better than my Indonesian. So we're not really getting anywhere. And he's like, oh, I used to work on a boat. Uh, he used to fish for tuna. And then he's like, oh, I was like, he's like, oh, for Japan. I was like, oh, I lived in Japan for 11 years. He's like, oh, really? And then turns out he's lived in, uh, in Japan for four years and... I don't know. We uh, we've been speaking in Japanese ever since. So, Ichinen kan doko datta? Ichinen kan Nagoya desu. Nagoya. Ato de Nagano. Nagano. Ichinen kan ha? Ichinen ichinen ha? Ichinen ha? Ato de Ibaraki. Ibaraki Ichinen. So around four four and a half years total. Ah, uh, moshiroi, moshiroi. Moshiroi. <laughs> <laughs> 
船の仕事,船の仕事もうないんだったよね。もうない。はい、パスポートもない、シーメンブックもない、何も。いや、大変そう。<笑>自分で考える。どどどういう、うんうん、どういう変えるか。どういう変える。うん<笑>うん仕事ありますかいいやもう僕もだんだん忘れてるよ。<笑>だんだん<笑>最近全然使ってないからだんだん忘れてる。面白いでもびっくりした。<笑>僕はじゃらんじゃらん。じゃあ行ってくる。ナイスとみちゅうね。Oh, nice、yeah. じゃあ行ってきますよ。Yes. Uh, uh, I want to come put my feet in the water. Maybe get a little bit of sun on this white body.、Uh, how crazy is that though? You, way out here in North Sumatra, I meet someone who speaks some Japanese. Crazy. Looks like a pretty good spot to have a resort and a guest house, a hotel, but looks like it didn't make it. I mean, you're probably less than 100 yards to the beach, but I mean, you saw it. There's hardly anybody out there, so I'm sure on the weekdays they were, weren't doing too well. But looks like a nice place. From here, we're just going to head back to Banda Aceh and. There's a couple places I want to check out before we go back to the hotel. So let's head that way. So, last stop on today's adventure. We're gonna come check out a tsunami museum, a tsunami monument. Basically, it's a it's a huge ship or a how much you call that a huge tanker that was swept inland and came to rest right here. And as you can see, they've kind of turned it into a tourist spot. Have all the shops outside and whatnot. December 26, 2004. Fortunately, there's not a whole lot of information in English. Doesn't look like. It looks like these are a bunch of names, and maybe、uh, how old they were right next to it. Wow. I told you in the last video, something like 30% of the population of Banda Aceh was、uh, killed in the tsunami. Wow. And I think this used to be someone's house. As you can see, completely destroyed. This tanker here barely missed it. But you can imagine how many houses and You know, how many trees and people and things that it took out getting to this location. So, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty cool. I mean, they have little exhibits and displays and Video monitors and whatnot explaining everything that happened, how it happened. But everything is in Indonesian, unfortunately. And there is zero English anywhere, so. That is pretty cool, though. They just let you climb and pretty much go anywhere you want on the ship. Make it your own personal playground. Come over here and get a nice view of Banda Aceh. It's actually a lot 
smaller of a city than I thought it would be. Ooh, and you just look right over the edge. Wow. And it's kind of on a slope too. <laughs> so, whoo. Yeah, it's crazy, these houses here. Nick! Almost gave me the finger down there. Come on now. First finger I've seen back in Indonesia, but like I was saying, I thought there was like millions of people in Bandache, but no, there's only like 250,000, which, which isn't too many. I'm doing something right here, man. Stop begging for money. You gotta be careful too. These steps are steep. Hello. Excuse me. Hello. And it kind of makes you wonder if this used to be an even bigger tourist attraction. I mean, they have signs over there that says cafeteria. There's like a walkway that surrounds the entire premise. You know, maybe because of the pandemic, places like this, like many places, kind of fell apart. Hey, let me show you this over here. Like this looks like it used to be more of a happening place. There looks to be a gate over there. Maybe that was one of the entrances, but yeah, I'm guessing, I don't imagine Aceh got too many tourists, but the two years uh, during the pandemic, or two, I mean, two or three years during the pandemic, maybe, uh, you know, funds and things completely shut down here. Because things like this, is this even safe to walk on? Ooh. Yeah. That is pretty sketchy. Hello. Hello. Germany? Huh? German? Huh? German. German, no, no, American. America. America. Maybe. I don't know, do I look like a German? I've been told that before. Maybe I have some Scandinavian blood or something in me. There's a big, beautiful mosque over here. Yeah, so one thing you'll notice here in Aceh that is different from every other place in Indonesia that I've been to is you don't see any Independence Day war memorial statues or monuments or you know anything commemorating the uh, independence of Indonesia. A lot of times in kampungs like this you'll have the date August 8th uh, yeah no, August 17th 1945 painted on the on the entrance of kampungs and yeah, you don't see that here. Why is that? Well this is an area of Indonesia that has wanted its independence, wanted a self-rule for since the beginning of time, I guess, or since Aceh has been Aceh. Uh, when Indonesia won its independence in 1945, after the Japanese were defeated, Sukarno proclaimed independence, and well, Indonesia was born. And basically at that time, Indonesia was basically everything that the Dutch East Indies had control, right? So everything that the the Dutch, the Netherlands, every, everything that they controlled at that time just became Indonesia. Besides Papua, which won its independence, or they didn't win its independence, they wanted their independence. They became a uh, part of Indonesia in 1962. But there are another area in Indonesia that is fighting for its independence and wants to be free and wants to be its own country. And uh, 
Yeah, so there was a bloody uprising, civil war here in Aceh. And so people said, hey, you know, it's dangerous to go to Banda Aceh. You know, I think they were hinting at, you know, the, the strict religious uh, views here and the fact that they practice Sharia law. But honestly, any time before 2004, any time before the tsunami, I probably would not have wanted to come here because there was the Free Aceh movement, there was uh, GAM is what they were called. Uh, they were the paramilitary, they were the rebels, they were the, the ones fighting the Indonesian army to uh, gain their independence. And well, I don't think they were known for kidnapping foreigners like maybe they do in Papua. I just saw an article that my brother sent me saying, check out this New, Zealand, New Zealander who was kidnapped by some of the Papua rebels. He, this guy was deep in the mountains. This guy was in the middle of nowhere. Like, I, don't, I don't know what he was doing out there. But like I was saying, like I kind of get why a lot of places like Aceh and you know, even when I was in Maluku, people were like, don't call Maluku Indonesia. Like, we're Maluku. We're our own state. We're our own government. We're our own people. Like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of territories, a lot of, a lot of provinces, I think, that would like to have their own, they would like to be independent. But, you know, when, when Indonesia became Indonesia, they, like I said, they just got everything that the Dutch East Indies controlled and, there's a lot of natural resources here. There's a lot of uh, a lot of things here that would that makes Jakarta and the central government a lot of money, and they need that. You know, this area is known for black pepper and tin, and well, you know, the people here would argue they've been colonized by Europe, they've been colonized by the English, the Dutch, uh, the Japanese, and now they're being colonized by Indonesia, and so. If there is one silver lining from the tsunami, it is that it put an end to the civil war and they were able to sign in a, a peace treaty, a peace agreement that was backed by the UN. And in 2005, I agreed, the, I believe the, uh, the, the GAM, the Free Aceh Movement fighters were granted amnesty and they laid down their arms. And since then, I think they've been able to work together. And so, I mean, like I said, I, I get why places like this would want to be free. I mean, in 1999, East Timor was granted their independence from Indonesia. Um, during the free, during the uh, the independence war from 1945 to 1949 against the Dutch, when the Dutch came back, uh, this area helped fight for Indonesia and so they were promised self-rule and self-government but I don't think they were ever given it or they weren't given enough of it and so I think to this day they have a lot of control over their their governing here kind of like uh, maybe Joke Jakarta but yeah I think the Indonesian government kind of you know lets Aceh govern how they want in a way to an extent and now you don't have any calls for independence here in Aceh. It's a lot more peaceful. But like I said, that would probably be the only reason I wouldn't come here if it if there was still a civil war here, obviously. So anyways, hope you can hear me over the noise of that bus. From here, I'm just gonna head back to the hotel, chill out, and uh, yeah. I think that's gonna do it for today's video though. Thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs> nice and fluffy. Duku, I like Duku. Duku, brapa. This looks like a, I don't know, a Chinese kampung? Yeah, this was the uh, Pasar Kartini. Seen better days. <laughs>